having the most crisp, high-quality live stream ever is kind of cool. But sometimes, you gotta muck things up a bit. Like when my internet starts getting really funky and I have to switch over to my dial-up connection. This is sometimes just what you gotta do to stay online. Just how we did it back in the old days. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Sorry y'all, I know, I know quality isn't the best, but I wanted to stay online. I have something super important to say, which meant using the backup internet connection. We're here in the Walmart parking lot using the McDonald's Wi-Fi, and I need to tell you that this, the, the secret to getting views on Twitch is actually super easy, and it... So this kind of setup involves a couple things. Uh, I'm actually going to talk about paid OBS filters, or paywalled, I guess, OBS filters, which... Some of you all might not dis might not agree with, but it's behind someone's Patreon. So it's like seven bucks to get access to their Patreon, download them, give them support for developing this cool stuff. I don't see anything wrong with that. This is from a creator by the name of Umpuko. I'm probably saying that wrong and I'm sorry, but they have two uh, Lewis script for OBS that add filters to your OBS. The first is JPEG GPU, which simulates JPEG compression on like crazy scale, which is awesome. And the other one, which is my favorite, is the NTSC FX, which kind of simulates NTSC like over the air antenna kind of modulation and degradation to your source. Kind of VHSC, but this one's a little bit more kind of authentic. Like I've done a video before on doing glitch arty kind of crazy effects with OBS. And this is a lot more authentic and kind of subtle depending on the way you do it. So we are going to set it up here in this version of OBS that I have running for the Twitch Enhanced Beta. And so this is my scene for it. If I switch to the scene, I've built up this MySpace Space Hey kind of layout with a bunch of old school blinkies and all that to fit my, my Y2K aesthetic for one of the scenes I want to go with. But, but having a full 4K camera didn't really make sense for the scene. So this is how I have it set up for now. We'll probably tweak it as things go, but I'm really happy with how this looks. So first and foremost, I have my webcam scene. But then I needed to nest that again so I could apply filters to this scene. So I just made webcam nest effect that I apply the filters to. We're gonna right click that scene and go to filters and I'm gonna turn all this off and I'm gonna delete that. So the first effect I wanted to play with was NTSC effects, which is the filter from the script. So to set these up in the first place, after you download them from the Patreon, you go to tools, scripts, and then you just add the Lewis scripts for each of these. There's no options in the scripts menu. All the script does is add the filters to your filters menu. So add those Lewis scripts to your scripts folder and then right click your source filters. And this works on just about everything. And then you add a new filter. In this case, it is NTSF, NTSC FX by Umpuko. Click OK. And by default, you might not even think it worked. Like, you don't really see anything. And this threw me off at first a little bit, even though I read the instructions, which tell you this. But, like, I applied it to gameplay. I applied it to this. And, like, if you zoom in, zoom in a ton, you can kind of see it. But it's not really there. And that's because it works the best when you start scaling down your source. And so what you need to do is add a scaling aspect ratio filter. I use area scaling because that kind of gets the crunchy nearest neighbor kind of look while still interpolating when you're not even. And then I go all the way to just uh, 854 by 480, which is the widescreen version of 480p. Now you need this to happen before NTSC FX. So you scale and then apply the filter. And even if we turn off the filter, like scaling it down doesn't really look any different here. You can see it, it, it you might see a little bit more jaggeds, but like, by default, you're not really going to notice it. But by scaling it down and then applying the filter, now we're starting to see it. We've got more pronounced jaggies. We've got a little bit of chroma blur and chromatic aberration. And there's even some like ringing artifacts around harsh edges. It starts to get that kind of natural degradation look. And then what I go ahead and do is add another scaling filter, again with area scaling, and bring that back up to the native res of my camera. So 4K. You can see in the preview, it doesn't do a ton, but in the actual scene, it does a fair bit. And so that is the default filter. And I like that enough as is. Like, you could probably just use that, and it's great. Like, this is exactly the kind of look that I was going for. But I did appreciate the JPEG filter and wanted to take it a little bit further. And so I also added that in after the re upscale step because it has its own scaler. So we're going to add a new filter, JPG, JPGPU. And then, again, by default, you're not really going to notice it, but it has this render downscale, which is just basically a decimator that starts crunching your footage again. And you can see here it starts really blocking it up, 
which is the same as doing the scaling artifact for the most part. You don't really want to go too far with this, but what you want to do, I changed block size to 4x4, and I'll show you why in a minute, because I'm going to leave it on default. But the truncation is basically your JPEG compression level, is how I'm looking at it. So 100 or 1 is basically 100% quality. You're not going to notice it super much, but you start bringing it down. And you can see it gets grainier and blockier, and then it starts introducing banding in the colors. And then you start getting dithering. And eventually, if you go too far, cool little abstract look, but you know, it looks like a posterization effect from 90s like skateboarding videos or something. And so you find a little happy balance where it looks like an overly compressed JPEG combined with this filter. Now, it does have these block sizes. So it's got 4x4, 8x8, 16x16, and 32x32, which would imply, since it says slow, that that would be like a higher quality or better result kind of thing. It certainly does move slow here, but what I find is it adds these big macro squares across the screen that ends up looking really poor. And so I actually make it really small because it kind of makes the effect less, I guess, obvious. You can see here it really changes the banding and stuff like that. Um, but I, f I feel like the bigger squares become more visible as just like a static grid across the image. And so I prefer dropping it all the way to 4x4 and then building my truncation setting based on that. And I just want it subtle. Like I want the banding to be noticeable and stuff, but I don't want it to fully look like a posterization filter. And you can play with the order of these. Like if I drop that before NTSC, it gets really crunchy here. And maybe that's what you want, especially if we pop back in the scene. Like now it just looks like really, really compressed video, which is kind of a vibe in and of itself. But play around with how you want it to look yourself. I think adding the extra little banding on top of the NTSC look preserves the integrity of the NTSC look because just doing it in the way I had it before, you can't really tell that it has those qualities from that filter. But that is how I do the primary visual of it. And then I have a scan line overlay and some other stuff in this scene that we'll talk about as I explore my full stream layout I've been building for this crazy world I want to stream in. That is the bulk of it, but I also wanted to take it further with an audio plugin recommended by Shindix, the 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 person, the VTuber person who recommended the the, the HUD style layout that I made for Armored Core Six. They highlight all sorts of crazy streamers and their layouts and stuff, and they highlighted this VST that I wanted to point out, which again is paid. This is called Lossy from Good Hertz. Now, I typically avoid paid VSTs for a lot of this stuff, especially for videos, because not everyone can access it, and this thing is seventy nine dollars which is super expensive. There is a free one called MAME, which is very exciting and I want to play with it, but it is VST3 only and OBS does not support VST3. If you're using something like the Elgato Wavelink software, it supports VST3. So you could use it there if you're processing your mic that way, but built into OBS, this cannot be used. Whereas the Lossy plugin comes in VST2 as well. And so go over here to my mic audio device, add a filter, and I added the gigahertz lossy. And so this simulates a lot of different lossy compression, be it MP3 compression, uh, frequency limiting for like phone calls, as well as even packet loss and packet repeating, which adds that crackly whatever. Now, I think in the intro, I had the gain crank too high, so it was a little too clippy. You want it to be a little bit clipped because that's how it starts sounding when you're in those Skype calls or Discord calls where your audio gets real robotic -y, but it gives you that kind of underwater effect. And so... These are the settings I landed on, but I'm actually using two because I really like the packet repeat effect, which adds the little extra blips and blurps of your voice that's coming in at the wrong time because that's just really nostalgic for me, but it's a little too overbearing to have it on normally. So I have two versions of the plugin. I have one set up that is just the standard compression kind of sound, the underwater effect. And so I have it 71% amount, 80% wet dry basically, so that you hear most of it, but you still hear me pretty clear through there. And then I crank the gain a little bit. I had it much higher. I think I had a double in the intro. Uh, I think this sounds a little bit better, a little less crunchy. And when you have it on, then you get a little visual here of the blocks and stuff like that. I am just using the 30 day trial because I just wanted to show up for this video. I don't know if I'm committed to using it yet. Like I said, $79 is very expensive, but you get, you get some meters here and everything else. And so this is how I have it set up. You get a little extra reverb and stuff like that. But then it does clip your audio, as you can see in my audio meter over here. So then I needed to add another limiter to keep it down. But then I still wanted a little bit of that packet repeat going on here. So I added the packet repeat with everything else left on default with just 1% speed, 14% amount, and 46% wet dry so that I could just get a little bit of that coming through the audio and then limited it again. And then to just automate switching to all of this, I just set up a basic Stream Deck multi-action, right-click, create multi-action, 
and it switches to the scene and then turns on all of those audio filters. And then you would probably set up another multi-action or either make this a multi-action toggle to turn all those filters back off whenever you switch off the scene so that your audio doesn't stay robotic-y or whatever. This isn't for everyone. I love diving into these niche effects and like building out my own stuff. And I was super inspired to build out my own kind of Y2K computer streaming theme because this is what I grew up with. The, the, the blinkies, the, the buttons, the, the, the Neko Cat, you know, cursor, all of that. This is what I grew up with. This is how the internet looked for a long time for me. And I think it's pretty cool. Obviously, with the audio and stuff, you wouldn't want to have that going on for a long time on your stream. But I think for a goofy little one-off or something, it has its time and place. And I've seen tons through Shindigs' Twitter, tons of VTubers putting these creative effects to some pretty cool use. Just wanted to show it off. Links to everything will be in the description below, as always. I also have a full written tutorial up on streamguides.gg, linked in the description below. If you want to go check that out, uh, be sure to support us on Discord premium memberships or Kofi or some coffee or something to support free tech education. Remember to be kind, rewind. I do have this video right here. I'm building out crazy glitch art setups with OBS Studio, if you're interested in taking this even further, and I have my video on the Armored Core mech style HUD layout that I built my own shader for in this video over here. Go check that out if you're interested.